Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Leonie van Pletsen, the Operations Manager of MFSA. The MFSA received a lot of questions with regards to our value proposition. So this year we decided to develop something for our members that will assist you specifically with regards to compliance. We developed a compliance manual, an enforcement booklet, and also a credit policy. Today I'm sitting here with advocate Jan Ogestein and Arno Bosch. Both of them have got legal backgrounds and they will provide us with information about compliance. Jan, what have you developed for the members in order to assist them with compliance? We have drafted a compliance manual, which basically consists of information about the National Credit Act, uh, about uh, FICA legislation, you know, the Financial Intelligence Center Act uh, legislation, and also about POPI, which is the Protection of uh, Private Information Act. And the whole idea with the document is to make it easier because we all know that the legislation is quite complex and not everybody understands it. You sit with the legislation, for instance, on the Credit Act, and then you have the regulations and you have to combine these two sometimes. So what we've done is we've done exactly that. We have, we've taken out for the micro lenders that information which is basically applicable to them in their circumstances, in their business, when we talk about... Uh, so that was the idea, to make it easier for micro lenders to understand what they have to comply with, to have an easy reference to it, and then uh, to be able to use something which is quick and easy for them. What is included in the manual and how can this be used by members? Well, what we've done is we've, done, we've, we've taken basically, when I think about the National Credit Act, We've taken those chapters uh, and taken the same sequence as the legislation itself. So, so a micro lender would be able to look at the information in the manual and would be able to do a cross-reference with the act if, if need be. But the added bonus is that you also would have the regulations. So when you look at reckless lending and, and, and debt review, you would also be able to quickly look and, and see Section 23A that deals with uh, affordability assessment in the regulations. Arno, what's included in the enforcement booklet? Leonie, what we've done in addition to the manual is we looked at the enforcement booklet, like you say, as well as the credit granting policy. Um, and that's more to, to assist the members in, in the microfinance industry in, in, in broad, uh, to ensure that they, they understand that there, there's a level of compliance they need to comply with. Uh, we don't want to complicate it. Uh, there is issues, or there are issues with regard to the credit granting uh, stages um, that, that one needs to comply with. Uh, we know the NCR's uh, uh, investigation and, and enforcement and regulation in terms of the, those issues are, are quite rough. So we wanted to establish a, a, an easy booklet to, to indicate what needs to be complied with when you look at the credit granting process. What happens if there's non-compliance? Then we move to the booklet. What is the difference between an investigation by the NCR and a mere compliance, compliance visit by the NCR? What are the ob obligations of the, of the micro uh, uh, financier with regard to those, those two differences in, in, in investigations and, and the compliance uh, visits? And, and how, to, how to deal with, with those type of approaches by the NCR? The MFSA developed the compliance manual, the enforcement booklet and the credit granting policy. How can this be used and implemented by members? Um, we've both been at the National Credit Regulator, so we are quite a fay with uh, what the regulator do does when it conducts an, in an inspe inspection and investigation, uh, what they're looking for, and we know what the compliance issues are. And we are fortunate enough to also understand the, the legal issues behind the compliance issues. So from, from our side, we can uh, assist micro lenders um, to do a sort of mock inspection to ensure that they are compliant and to indicate to them where they are not compliant and how to deal with, those not, with that, with that non-compliance. And also then from a, from a legal stand, uh, standpoint, we can also assist with the legal issues, whether it be legal opinions that are required or um, if there's legal action to be able to assist with uh, in litigation, for instance. To act in a preemptive way is, is, is much more cost effective than to act subsequent to a non-compliance where there's been a, an investigation and, and to try and fight a case at the tribunal. 
So the re reality is for members to say, look, I want to ensure that my practices are compliant. I'd rather get someone in to ensure that they are compliant and to give your so-called stamp of approval, approval that I am fine with my credit granting uh, process, I'm fine with my record keeping, I don't exceed when it comes to rates and fees and, and those type of issues, uh, credit life issues. Um, so it's better to have that preemptive uh, approach than to say, look, I am now in trouble, I've had investigation and now I need to react. Jan, what do you feel is the biggest compliance challenges facing the industry? Compliance is a major issue anywhere in the world. Um, regulators take strong action. It's not uncommon to see fines overseas of 8 billion US dollars for a bank that hasn't complied with, uh, with the FICA requirements. So com compliance to comply is, is, is important because the, 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 the fact of the matter is that um, the result for the micro might be might be uh, disastrous if you're not compliant. But I think what we bring to the table uh, is our experience um, around the compliance issues, but also what is going on um, that micro lenders don't necessarily know about. For instance, uh, if you think about the uh, regulation uh, uh, bill that's coming, financial regulation bill that's, uh, that's on the table, uh, there, are, um, there are new issues coming to the fore. It, 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 it changes the regulatory structure completely, and that bill is going to be an act this year. So um, there, are, there are certainly quite a number of compliance challenges, and we can see it also in the litigation that takes place. There's uncertainty about a lot of inter interpretational issues. Um, when we look at compliance, um, it's going to even become even more difficult because they, the, the Department of Trade Industry is looking at expanding the powers of the regulator. And our issues there, which is going to be of a massive impact to micro -readers. Previously, we had the situation that only the tribunal, uh, sorry, only the courts, could declare a contract as reckless, great agreement. Then we had the situation with the amendments and now also the tribunal can, can, can do so. But the intention is to actually have the regulator being able to declare uh, a, a credit agreement reckless. And that is a, has a massive impact on, on the industry. You also sit with um, other powers that are being increased, and that's the ability for the regulator to issue an administrative fine directly. And that means that the National Consumer Tribunal is nothing but a, a review or an appeal forum. And Arno, what do you think? We're so close to a type of overregulation. Um, which is also not good for the industry. Those problems is at the, 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 the foot of the, the micro lender in this case. We're already going there, that is so. Uh, to sit back and say, I'll, fa I'll face the consequences is maybe not the right approach. Uh, one need to be educated about what's coming, that's very important. And, and if you look at, at the history, uh, since 2007 we've come a long way in terms of the Act, but there's still major problems. There's still a lot of ambiguities when you look at the Act. There's, there's still a, a, a few interpretational issues that needs to get resolved. So there's so many issues that still need to be clarified. And those issues are not drying up. The reality is, you know, it's, it's courts and, and court action is, is very rife, which is not necessarily a bad thing because at, at the end of the day, it, it's necessary to crystallize and, and, and get to a space where you say, look, the act is now properly worded, it can be enforced, it can be understood, but the reality is we're not there at the moment. So, so these things are going to continue. And, and if you look at the amendments that's come in over the last 10 years, there, there's been a Quite a, quite a bit of amendment when you look at the NCA and, and it's not drying up. One would need to be ready for what's coming and to make sure that the business operate in a manner that's, that's as soon as it, it steps in, it's not completely destructive or, or, or detrimental to your business. So it's important to understand the issues that's coming um, and it's important to get the right advice when, when it comes to those type of issues. And it's important to understand the industry and the dynamics as a whole. Jan, any closing comments from your side? Firstly, I have to commend the market in the industry. Um, I, 
You know, I started at the MFRC in, in 2000. And one tends to forget the massive growth over the years, specifically if I think about compliance issues. Um, it has been, it's been such a process where we are here today. And one should never underestimate the massive growth that's taken place um, within the micro-lending industry. Uh, micro-lenders have grown tremendously. The sad reality is that um, the opportunity was lost to, to fix up the issues in the National Credit Act that are still burning issues. And, and, and that, unfortunately, is not going to change in the next year. On FICA, just maybe a, a short comment. Um, at the moment, microlenders do not have to comply with the Financial Intelligence Center Act. But that is going to change, and it's going to change this year. And it's, it's, it is a definite. The Financial Intelligence Center made it quite clear that they want to increase um, the scope of the act and the regulation and not only to credit providers but also to numerous others other entities so so that is coming and it's important that micro lenders look forward and know these things and do not leave it for the last moment because when that act uh, it becomes applicable in the micro lending industry it's going to be something that they're going to need to comply with immediately and it is something new again that micro lenders will have to know about. So be forewarned, be prepared, don't just look uh, what is in front of you, but see the whole industry uh, for, for what it is and what it presents. Arna, any closing remarks from your side? Micro lenders should, should stand together and, and, and be supportive a bit more. Uh, the reality is it's an industry that's, that's taking currently a bit of strain. Um, and, and we've had the privilege of engaging the, the MFSA quite regularly on issues and the reality is micro lenders needs to, to engage with you guys. You guys have your, your ears on the ground and, and it's good to, to, to have that type of support. Um, so I, you know, I can vouch for that type of thing. It's, it's important to, to do that and to be ready. We should take charge as, a, as an industry to say we want to get rid of unscrupulous uh, uh, micro lenders. Um, you know, I act for, for quite a number of registered uh, credit providers that, that do their utmost best to comply. But the reality is you, you get, often you get complaints, but you know, the, the shop around the corner is still keeping cards or ID documents or that, that type of thing. If you don't complain about it, to get rid of those type of, those type of entities, uh, you know, the, don't complain about the industry as a whole. You know, every, every compliant, micro lender that's registered with the NCL would, would need to take up guard and say look we need to protect the industry. We don't necessarily have the, have the best reputation out there but we need to get rid of the guys that, that, that do things like keeping cards and ID, uh, ID documents and those type of things and I've got an obligation either to report it to the MFSA and we know the MFSA will, will, will provide that, those type of information to the NCL or report them to the NCL directly. Current compliant registered micro lenders should stand together to rid the industry of those those type of issues and support them. And I think that someone like or institution like the NCI would, would would appreciate that. The reality is those people are not registered, so they, for clarity's sake or, or, or for the purpose of this discussion, you could safely assume that those people are not on the radar of the NCI. The consumers uh, that deal with those type of institution will will probably not raise any complaints because they've probably been clients of those type of institutions you know for quite a number of years so the only people that can really stand up and say we need to rid the industry of those type of unscrupulous non-compliant credit providers would, would be the compliant ones. Thank you Jan, thank you Arnu for providing us with your time um, we really appreciate all of your efforts especially with regards to compliance. The MFSA has developed a compliance manual, an enforcement booklet and also a credit granting policy. We want to assist you to become compliant. Thank you.